In the twilight of 20th century America, a series of experiments emerged from the depths of scientific inquiry, casting long shadows that still linger in our collective consciousness. Among these, the Mouse Utopia experiments stand out as a chilling testament to the darker side of human curiosity. Picture, if you will, a world bathed in the cold light of fluorescent bulbs, where the air hangs heavy with the scent of rodents and the whisper of scientific ambition. It is here, in this sterile realm of metal and glass, that our tale begins. The year is 1950, and the world is still reeling from the aftermath of global conflict. In the halls of academia, a new battle is brewing, not one of bullets and bombs, but of ideas and theories that threaten to shake the very foundations of our understanding of society. Enter John B. Calhoun, a man whose passion for animal behavior would lead him down a path few dared to tread. His journey began with birds, but as his research deepened, so too did his fascination with the intricate dance of social animals. It was at Johns Hopkins University that Calhoun's vision took shape, transforming an empty plot of land into a living laboratory that would soon become infamous. As Calhoun set the stage for his grand experiment, the world outside was grappling with its own demons. The specter of overpopulation loomed large, fueled by the dire predictions of neo-Malthusian thinkers. Their warnings echoed through literature and scientific discourse alike, painting a bleak picture of a future where humanity's unchecked growth would lead to its own demise. It was against this backdrop of fear and uncertainty that Calhoun's Mouse Utopia was born. With five pregnant female mice as its founding members, this miniature world was designed to be a paradise, a place where every need was met, where danger was absent, and where life could flourish unimpeded. But as we shall see, dear viewers, paradise has a price, and in the realm of Calhoun's creation, that price would be paid in blood, madness, and the very essence of what it means to be alive. As the first generation of mice scurried about their new home, blissfully unaware of the fate that awaited them, Calhoun watched with the keen eye of a scientist and the growing unease of a man who had glimpsed the abyss. For in this perfect world something was stirring, something dark, primal, and utterly terrifying. The population exploded, just as Calhoun had anticipated. But it was what happened next that would etch this experiment into the annals of scientific infamy. As the numbers swelled, so too did the cracks in this rodent society. The utopia began to unravel, thread by thread, revealing the monstrous truth that lay beneath. Witness now, as we delve deeper into the heart of this twisted tale, where science meets nightmare, and where the lines between observation and obsession blur into a terrifying new reality. As the mouse population burgeoned, Calhoun's meticulous observations revealed a society teetering on the brink of chaos. The once spacious enclosure, designed to house thousands, became a crucible of behavioral aberrations. Picture, if you dare, a scene of mounting horror. Mothers, their instincts warped by the pressures of overcrowding, began to abandon their young. Tiny pink bodies littered the floor of the enclosure, their pitiful cries echoing unanswered through the sterile air. The mortality rate among the young skyrocketed, reaching a staggering 96% in some cases. But death was not the only specter haunting this mouse metropolis. As the population stabilized around 150 individuals, far below the enclosure's capacity, a new and disturbing social order emerged from the chaos. Imagine, if you will, a world where the strong prey upon the weak with impunity, where the air is thick with the scent of fear and the sound of desperate scrabbling. This was the reality of mouse utopia in its decline. Dominant males, their aggression amplified by the claustrophobic conditions, carved out territories with tooth and claw, these alpha mice, drunk on their own power, became tyrants in miniature. They roamed their domains unchallenged, their every whim catered to by a cadre of submissive females. But what of the other males, those not blessed with size or strength? Their fate was perhaps the most chilling of all. Rejected by their peers, denied access to females, these beautiful ones retreated into a world of their own making. They became obsessed with grooming, spending hours preening their fur to a glossy sheen, but beneath this veneer of perfection lay a disturbing truth. These mice had lost all interest in mating, in fighting, in the very act of living itself. As Calhoun watched this unfolding drama, his scientific detachment began to crack. He saw in these mice a dark reflection of human society, a warning of what might await us should we continue down the path of unchecked growth and urban congestion. But the horrors were far from over. As we delve deeper into the latter stages of the experiment, prepare yourselves for revelations that will shake your faith in the natural order and leave you questioning the very foundations of society itself. As the experiment entered its final, terrible phase, the true extent of the social collapse became apparent. 
The once vibrant Mao society had devolved into a nightmarish parody of itself, a world where the natural order had been turned on its head. Imagine if you can, a scene of utter desolation. The air, once filled with the busy sounds of rodent life, now hangs heavy with an eerie silence. In corners and crevices, small groups of mice huddled together, their eyes wide with a madness born of desperation. But it is not just the weak who have fallen victim to this descent into chaos. Even the dominant males, once the pinnacle of mouse society, have begun to exhibit bizarre and disturbing behaviors. Witness as they turn on each other with savage fury, their territorial instincts warped beyond recognition. Blood-stained fur and torn flesh become common sights in this dystopian realm. Perhaps most chilling of all is the fate of the young. Those few infants who survive birth find themselves in a world utterly unprepared to nurture them. Mothers, their maternal instincts eroded by the constant stress, abandon their offspring without a second thought. The lucky ones die quickly, the unlucky ones grow into stunted, traumatized adults, perpetuating the cycle of dysfunction. As Calhoun observed this living nightmare, he began to see parallels with human society that chilled him to his core. The breakdown of social norms, the rise of violence and apathy, the collapse of the family unit, all these echoed the warnings of sociologists and urban planners about the dangers of overcrowding in human cities. But there was one final terrible revelation yet to come. As the experiment neared its conclusion, Calhoun noticed a phenomenon that defied explanation. The birth rate once explosive had slowed to a trickle. And those few mice that were born seemed different, weaker, less viable, as if the very genetic fabric of the population had begun to unravel. This, dear viewers, was the true horror of mouse utopia. Not just the collapse of a society, but the potential extinction of a species. In creating a world free from predators and want, Calhoun had inadvertently engineered the perfect conditions for self-destruction. As we contemplate the implications of this ghastly experiment, we must ask ourselves, are we in our crowded cities and our resource-hungry civilizations not walking a similar path? Are the signs of our own decline already visible? If only we have the courage to see them. The experiment, initially designed to study population dynamics, had metamorphosed into a chilling parable about the fragility of social structures and the potential for societal collapse. Imagine, if you will, the hushed conversations in academic halls, the furtive glances exchanged over conference tables. Calhoun's findings had struck a nerve, tapping into deep-seated anxieties about the future of human civilization. In the wake of his publications, a wave of dystopian literature and films swept through popular culture, each work a dark mirror reflecting our fears back at us. But the true horror of Mouse Utopia lay not in its immediate impact, but in the questions it left unanswered. As we stand here decades later, those questions continue to haunt us, their implications growing more terrifying with each passing year. Consider, dear viewers, the eerie parallels between Calhoun's microcosm and our own world. In our teeming cities, do we not see echoes of the behavioral sink that doomed the mice? The rise of social isolation, the breakdown of community ties, the increasing reports of mental health crises, are these not warning signs, flashing red in the night? And what of the more insidious effects? Calhoun's mice experience genetic degradation over time, their very DNA warped by the pressures of their environment. Calhoun's work, controversial though it may be, serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance upon which our societies are built. In the end, the legacy of Mouse Utopia is not just a cautionary tale about overpopulation or resource management. It is a mirror held up to the very essence of what makes us human, our social bonds, our adaptability, our drive to survive and thrive. And in that reflection, we see both our greatest strengths and our most terrifying vulnerabilities. As you return to your lives, dear viewers, carry with you the lessons of this dark experiment. Look around you with new eyes, alert to the signs of societal strain. For in understanding our potential for collapse, we may yet find the wisdom to prevent it. The mice of utopia may be long gone, their tragic tale consigned to the annals of scientific history, but their silent screams echo still, a ghostly warning from the past to a future balanced on a knife's edge. Will we heed that warning? Or are we, in our blind pursuit of progress and comfort, already too far down the road to our own beautiful apocalypse? Only time will tell, and time, as John B. Calhoun discovered in his nightmarish utopia, is the cruelest experimenter of all.